What is up, Yeshuans? How are you guys? Sorry, I'm running a little late today. I am sick as a dog. I have caught the bug that is going around. And so I had to get my my little, you like this? Hashtag blessed. How cool is that? Somebody, I, I got the pleasure of baptizing about that for me. Mm. So yeah, if you're wondering why I sound like a, I got a deep radio voice, it's because I'm sick. That's the only benefit of being sick, right? You get that really cool deep voice going on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Yeshua Show. We're going to be doing day number five of the prayer. Yay! Can you tell? We got like even like a little crack going. <coughs> oh man, I apologize for any disgusting coughs I do along the way today. All right, so thank you guys for being here. Day number five. Yesterday we talked about unanswered prayers. Today we're going to talk about answered prayers and, and uh, miracles. Because you know what? As I said on day number three... Yeah, I want to bring up testimonies. Well, I have a testimony for you guys. It's pretty awesome. One of many. But today I have a wonderful testimony I want to share with you. And I hope that it encourages you. I used to uh, be part of a, a Bible study in Hollywood, California. A very unusual place to have a Bible study, let me tell you. And uh, I had the most amazing uh, fellows in this men's Bible study. And we called it God's Chosen Men. And uh, there was about 83 guys that packed into my two-bedroom apartment. And I'm talking, you know, full-grown men packed into a very small two-bedroom apartment in Hollywood. I had no uh, central air unit. You know, the only airflow was we had to open up the windows. And it got stinking in there. I mean, really hot and sweaty. It was nasty. But you know what? We loved it. It was, it was the best of times because we had God's presence in this Bible study like nothing I've ever seen to this day. Um, if you should ever come across one of the gentlemen who were in this Bible study, they will tell you it, it was the most amazing God experience any of us had, had ever had. And uh, the Bible study went on for about a year and a half, two years, uh, until the devil came and, of course, broke it up and found a way to, to divide us and so on and so forth. But until that happened, we had legitimate miracles happening every single week. And so I want to testify of one of the greatest miracles I personally have participated in and seen. Um, we had one of our brothers, uh, had a brother, uh, a flesh brother, who had been diagnosed with cancer. And for two years, he went through every kind of chemotherapy or treatment that he could possibly uh, get. And he got to a point where the cancer had reached his lymph nodes. And it, uh, the doctor said he had fourth degree lymph node cancer, which basically for anybody out there, if you don't know, that's like guaranteed death in just a matter of moments. Uh, the doctors had given him three weeks to live or something around that time. It was a very short period of time. And uh, this gentleman knew all of us. We were his friends. Um, and so he asked us, he knew about the Bible study and he asked us if we would pray for his brother. And uh, he actually came to the, um, the Bible study and we laid hands on, on, on our friend um, and we all prayed for his brother who was in another state. I think he was like in Missouri or something like that. So we're in Hollywood, California, laying hands on, on my friend for the sake of his brother who had fourth degree lymphoid cancer. And every single week, you guys, our, our Bible study was on a Monday and every single week we would come back on the next Monday and God had granted uh, and performed miraculous miracles. I'm saying every week, I'm not lying to you. It was, it's just, it was the most biblical thing I'd ever seen and experienced. As you can tell, I get very excited about even talking about it. Oh, it was amazing. So, um, we prayed for him and the doctor had given him like three weeks to live and our Bible study was on a Monday. He went to go see his doctor on Wednesday and the first thing that the doctor asked him was, what have you done since the last time I seen you? And he's just like, what? I, nothing, what do you mean? And he goes, half of your cancer is gone. So for two years, he went through every treatment he could possibly try and do, and it, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. The doctor had given him like three weeks to live. Then our group prayed for him. We believed because of all the miracles we saw every single week happening. We believed that God would do something in this young man's life, and he was a believer, and he had that faith that, that you know God would move in him and that he, a miracle would happen. Well, half of his cancer was gone. We prayed on Monday, half of his cancer was gone by Wednesday when he went back to see the doctor. I'm not lying, I'm telling you the absolute truth. It, unbelievable, right? Well, it was only like a month or two later, the entire cancer had left him, all of it. And he gave credit 
to the prayer. He gave credit to God. He said it was God that healed him. So praise the Lord. So for those of you out there, I am telling you, God still performs miracles. I am telling you that God still gives us the Holy Ghost, that the Holy Ghost moves in this world and that God does perform miraculous healings. And and I know that there are some strange things out there on the internet or on TV where people are behaving in a way that's questionable, claiming that thing people are getting healed and so forth. But you know what? There are real versions of it. I I, I don't know if those people are really being healed. I, I'm, I'm, as long as they're giving credit to God for being healed, then praise God. But the truth is... I know for a fact that God really does do miraculous healings. And I know that the gospel is not a lie and Christ said that he wants to heal us. So today that's the topic and that's my testimony to kick us off. And uh, the first passage I want to read to you is Mark 9, 28 through 29. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he asked them, or, and he said to them, this kind uh, can come forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. So King James Version, a little tricky, and I'm sick, so I don't know why I can't read today. But the point is, is he's saying, they were saying, Lord, there was this man, and he was uh, demonic possessed, and we prayed over him, and we did, and, and tried to cast out the sickness, but it didn't work. How come it didn't work? And Christ replied, because this kind, you have to have a certain amount, or you have to have prayer and fasting to like build up to kind of combat it. And so that is Mark 9, 28. I'm going to also read some more and then we'll kind of recap, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. So right here, it tells us to have spiritual gifts, even to prophecy. It It is telling us that we are to desire the spiritual gifts in us and we are supposed to have them and we are supposed to experience them. Um, so for some people who believe that the Holy Ghost and the experience of the Holy Ghost was only for the apostles time period, well, that is just false teachings. The Bible is very clear. It is for all of us. This is also 1 Corinthians twelve eleven. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing every man severely as he will. Oh, wait, is that what I meant to read? I think my computer glitched. I don't think that was what I was supposed to read. Well, all right, let's keep going. <laughs> what are you going to do? I guess it was a good passage. Maybe somebody out there watching needed that one. Who knows? All right, James 4.2. Uh, okay, so you have not because you ask not, right? Or if you ask, you ask amiss. We've all heard that passage before, right? So here is another one. And it talks about how much people will do, how far in lengths people will go to get what they want. But... Will they go so far as to believe and pray for what they want? Will they go so far as to walk holy and righteous for God, to give up their fleshy desires in hopes that the Lord will move through them? See, we'll, we'll do horrible things, earthly things, fleshy things to get what we want. But will we do holy things, righteous things, and submit ourselves, as the Bible tells us to submit, to receive the gifts of God? According to James 4, 2, no. Ye lust and have not, ye kill, and desire to have, and contain, and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. So we will do all these other things, but will we simply just ask? And I think asking God is more than just verbally speaking it. There's another passage where God says, oh, they're close to me with their mouths, but they're very far away from me in their hearts. So when we ask God, we have to come to him and ask from our hearts. We have to believe in our hearts that he is our God, alive and living and performing miracles, and the Holy Spirit is moving today in our life. We have to come to him with our hearts and believe that, and that is what we did in this men's Bible study. Now, I want to give one more testimony before we read this last passage. We started off with small things. We didn't start off with cure this person of cancer, okay? The Bible talks about how God will give you a little, and he's going to see how you're going to do with it, and then if you do well with it, he'll give you more. And if you do well with that, he'll give you even more, right? So we started off with little things like, Lord, one of our brothers needs rent by, you know, next week, or he's going to get kicked out of his house. He's going to have no place to live. Or we had a guy who was homeless and he had no place to live. He literally like, we, we had seen him on the streets 
and we said, hey, we have a men's Bible study. Why don't you come? And within that Bible study, within two weeks, somebody within the Bible study found him a place to live, got him a job, put him on his feet. I mean, it was amazing. And then he became one of our brothers and, and he was with us and lived a normal life from that point on. So uh, we started with little things. We had faith for little things to start. But after two years of seeing a miracle being performed every single week, our faith grew and we just kept pushing the limit. We're like, oh yeah, God, you're going to grant this. Okay, let me do the next level. Okay, let me do the next level. And our faith grew. Okay. And the awesome thing is, is that some of you out there may not have the faith that God wants to bless you. But another cool thing is, is that you can be healed by somebody else's faith. You can be increased and blessed by somebody else's faith. We have the ability through our faith to spill onto somebody else. Our cup overfloweth onto other people, right? So when we're so full of faith and hope and belief, we can absolutely just be pouring that Holy Spirit onto other people. And then when they have that experience, they believe, right? So Mark 9, 8, 28 through 9. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind, oh, I already read that. As you can see, I'm sick. I'm just going to have a sip of tea because I'm out of my mind right now. Mm. All right. If you guys are not sick, don't get sick. This cold this year is painful. All right. So as you guys can see, I'm a huge believer in miracles. I'm a huge believer in the spirit and the workings of the spirit and the gifts of the spirit. And it is my belief that God wants to give those to you. So if you guys want those gifts, ask for them, fervently pray for them. And uh, this, this 40 days of prayer, it's a good start. We start with little things and as we go and as we move along through this 40 days, it builds a, a habit, right? And some of you have asked, okay, so what do we do after 40 days? Well, you guys, it's, it's not 40 day challenge only, it's start with 40 days. And then the idea is that if you prayed every single day for 40 days, and that wasn't a habit you had before, the idea is that now it's become a habit, it's become part of your life, and you will continue to pray every day. That's the point, right? It's, 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 the idea is to, to uh, begin a new work in you and to begin a new lifestyle. Amen? All right, so moving forward, let's go ahead and pray. And today I'm going to be praying for you guys to have the faith that is needed to move mountains, cause a tree to uproot and plant itself somewhere else to heal cancer and mend a broken leg. I, I mean, make the blind see, make a leopard healed. I'm talking absolute, absolute miracles. But I pray that you will start where you need to start, that God will enter into your life and he will speak to you at the level in which he can realistically speak to you that he will move your feet to his end as the Bible promises us he will, which will be to that place where your, your mustard seed will grow into a tree of wonderful faith producing many fruits, not just for you, but for everybody around you. Hallelujah. All right, so let's go ahead and pray. Almighty Yahweh, I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that, uh, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit, that you would show us more of your glory because when we see, we believe. When we hear, we believe. Lord, you said that faith is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So for any single person out there who believes in you, who believes that the cross saves them, that faith is proof they have the Holy Spirit. And I pray in the name of Yeshua that people will really acknowledge that and, 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 and understand the power of that, that their faith is not their own. Their faith is a gift from you. So, Thank you for faith. Thank you for hope. Thank you for joy and peace. And thank you for your mercy. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us from the cross to creating this world to giving us air to breathe so that we can understand what it means to be subconsciously in need of something. We are subconsciously constantly in need of air immediately every second. And that is how we are with you. We are actually in need of your life. If you do not breathe life into us, if you do not sustain the life that is all existence, Lord, we will cease to exist. You sustain us in every way. And Lord, that is what it is to breathe. We need to drink. And you said those who come to you will never thirst for they will have a forever bubbling up spring living in them and pouring out of them. Hallelujah. You said that those who come to you and are hungry will be fed. And Lord, we eat of your knowledge. We eat of your word and it fills us with things that we can't even understand. We become a totally different being. You say that we are not of this world. 
when we are made new in your image. Hallelujah. And God, I thank you for that. I thank you that you are able to reach beyond the abyss that was death, beyond the abyss that was damnation, and you bridged it with the cross. And I thank you so much for that. And I thank you for the lashes that you took on your back. I thank you for the cattails. I thank you for the nails in your hand. I thank you for the pierced rib and the broken heart and the crown of thorns. I thank you for these things because they give me faith and they let me know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you love me. And if you would take those lashes on your back that I may be healed by your skin being broken, then how much more should I believe that cancer has got to go? Uh, diabetes has got to go. Depression and addiction has all got to go. You did not take those 39 lashes on your back for vanity. Lord, you did not do it so people could be like, isn't that Jesus guy cool? Look at how many lashes he took. So Lord, I just thank you for that, that it had a purpose and that your purpose was to serve us. Hallelujah. Uh, I pray for every single person that you would meet them where they are at, whether they be in a place of complete doubt a complete anger and frustration and, and whether they're mad at you or mad at the world, I pray that you meet them where they're at, that you soften their heart and that you penetrate through whatever boundaries they have and that you would plant your seed of faith and hope and that you would give it water and give it the sunlight or your light that it needs to grow into a miraculous faith tree and that it would and that they would look back and in 40 days from now, in a year from now, and be like, wow, I can't believe I ever doubted. I can't believe I used to live in a world where miracles were not being performed by the Holy Spirit. Lord, and for those who are in the Holy Spirit, for those who have the gifts that we are talking about, that you promised we would have, I pray that you would just continue to protect them and you would make them real warriors, real soldiers that go out into the world and battle the darkness. That they would bring that light into those dark places and they would just shine so stinking bright that the darkness just flees, just flees and runs away absolutely terrified knowing that you've showed up. And where you are, darkness and sin cannot reside. So I pray, Almighty Yeshua, that you would give us all more growth, no matter what stage we are in our walk with you, no matter what stage we are in our faith, but that you would lead us all to that place where we are cups overflowing and healing people who may not have any faith at all, uh, showing demonstrations of your miraculous power for even people who have no faith at all, for even those, Lord, who doubt that they would believe because they see. And use us as the vessel, Lord. None of us are worthy. We thank you for the cross and we thank you for the blood and we pray the blood over us that we are made worthy by your sacrifice uh, and that you would continue to do a work in us so that we can increase and continue to hold more of that wonderful love, grace, and mercy you have. In the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we lift this prayer up to you, Almighty Yahweh. Amen. All right, guys. So, mm, get the Holy Ghost right there. All right. <coughs> Sorry, that was super disgusting. Give me one moment. Mm. You see this? I'm drinking from a cup that's blessed. I drink from the blessed cup, guys. Hashtag blessed. You guys need to hashtag blessed all over your page, because you know why? For he who is free by the sun is free indeed. That's not a real song. I just made it up, and it's not very good. All right, guys, you be blessed. You be the blessing, and be the light. And don't forget, the 22nd of this month, we're going to have another candle lighting. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, we have the event page locked at the top of the page here on Yeshua. Please share it. Please share these videos. And you guys, start giving your testimonies because I know the Lord's going to start doing things in your life. I know that you're going to start being blessed from these 40 days. We're on day number five and uh, we're doing it. We're making it happen and you guys are following along. And I am so blessed because where two or three of you are gathered, he is there. And there's more than two or three of us. And we are we are submitting ourselves to be used by him and to, to have him work in us. And, oh, that's exciting. I get pumped. I get pumped. Anytime we got the Holy Ghost movement, I'm getting pumped. I just want you guys, you guys got to be prepared in the future. You're going to see me get pumped when the Holy Ghost starts just coming through. All right? Because I'm telling you, you've got great testimonies coming. Amazing. You be blessed, guys. Thank you so much for being here at Yeshua. We are blessed by you. Amen.